lesson series. My name is Pat Carwin. I would like to speak today about taking the strings on the guitar and using them in intervals since all music and improvisation starts with playing from an individual note and that note is in reference to the chord. This is a third. This is starting on a seventh. This is starting on a fourth. This is starting on the one. Putting them together, you have. So, with that said, I'd like to talk to you about the relation of the strings to each other as far as intervals go. A major scale is made up of whole step, whole step, half step. One, two, three, four. This being your one, this being your two, this being your three, this being your four. All major scales have a half step between three and four. Then it goes on whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, which is. So in other words, when I hit my fourth, it's a whole step to the fifth, a whole step to the sixth, a whole step to the seventh, and a half step between the seventh and the eighth. Now, what I've been looking for a guitarist, each thing that we play starts from some sort of a interval that is within the chord or within the scale. For instance, if we start on the third, there it is. If we start on the seventh, if we start on the fourth, if we start on the one. That is how you play. You use the intervals from within the chord and the scale to begin your solos and piece them together. look at now is that a memorization process to be helpful in finding one of these intervals that you're going to start on is simply found by first realizing that this is a one. Whenever this is your one, this is a four on the same fret I'm talking about. This is your flatted seventh, this is your flatted third, this is your fifth, and this is your one. So once again, this is your one, this is your four, this is your flatted seventh, this is your flat of third, this is your fifth, and this is your one. The reason for that, as you play a G chord here, what I talked about before in knowing the major scale, between four and five is a whole step. So if you look, you know this is a four. So it means you're holding the fifth right here. There's your octave on your eighth. If this is a flat of seventh, here's the seventh, here's your eighth. If you're playing a flat of third on this fret, you're playing the major third here. So you're playing one, five, octave, third, fifth, one. By memorizing one, four, flat of seventh, flat of third, fifth, and one, it is easy to go in either direction on the fret to see what you want to come up with. If the two is here, there it is, one whole step above your one. Major seventh is always a half step back from the one. If this is your octave, that's also the root. Half step back is your major seventh. Flat of seventh is on this fret. So the memorization of the one fret allows you to quickly find your way to a third. I know this is a flat of third here, so there's my major third. I know that this is a fourth here. I know that this is a flat of seventh. So a sixth is a half step back from that. What that does for you in a major scale, you know that there's between three and four is a half step. So it's easy to find your third by going, here's your fourth, here's your third, half step back. And a fifth is a whole step above a fourth. So there's your fifth. If you go to the flat of seventh, here it is, major seventh is here, half step above it. The octave is a half step above that between seven and eight being a half step. If you go back to your flat of seventh, the sixth is the half step lower. If you go to your minor third on your third string, 
your major third is a half step above that. If you go to the fifth, that's where it is on your second string. There's your root again. So one, major seventh, one, two, or ninth once you're past your seven notes. Four, three, four, five, flat of seventh, six, flat of seventh, major seventh, octave, minor third, second or ninth, minor third, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, root. Okay, so basically when we're holding a chord, it allows us to see that when we take this pinky off, how it became a seventh. It became a seventh because this note went a whole step back, and there's your flatted seventh. In a dominant chord, your seventh is always flatted. If you take this finger off, this is playing a major third, it plays the minor third now. It becomes a minor seventh. If I was to go here, that plays a major seventh and a major third. If I go here, it just plays the one, the five, the octave, third, fifth, and one. Okay, that does it for today. And remember, the more you learn on guitar, the less piano players will get hired. Thank you.